Hey guys and ladies, welcome back to another video. Today we have a episode of This Year in Perfume. And uh, we're going to talk about the year of 1992, which honestly, uh, in my collection, I thought after we got past the 80s and into the 90s that the real big hitters would calm down. That is not the case at all. I'm getting some, uh, we've got some amazing fragrances in this list. In fact, there's a lot of fragrances from 92, way more than I thought. Some of my favorites even. Um, but before we do that, um, let's talk a little bit about the year of 92. I don't want to go too deep into it. Um... Mostly because there's a lot of fragrances to talk about, uh, and that's why you guys are watching, not to talk about this other stuff. But some famous movies that came out in 1992, Wayne's World, Basic Instinct came out, uh, Batman Returns, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, um, what else came out in 92? Oh, Home Alone 2, uh, A Few Good Men, that's a good one, and then uh, for... Billboard Top 100s, How Could You Forget, Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You, um, and uh, Criss Cross Jump. I know you want to sing that one now that you've heard it. Okay, so now let's do Scent of the Day, actually, before we um, hop into the 1992 list. And my fragrance of the day today is a fragrance, a discontinued fragrance by Serge Loutons, and it's called Rus. And... Um, Rousse is one of the best cinnamon fragrances I think I've ever smelled. Um, it's almost like a cinnamon soliflor, if you if you want to call it that. It is perfect for the cooler weather. It's spring in Texas, but damn it, I want to wear these fragrances still. I don't want to switch to the fresher stuff yet. So this is what I'm wearing. Uh, and like I said, it is discontinued and hard to find, uh, but... If you're a lover of the note of cinnamon, try to find a bottle of this while you still can. I don't know about reformulations. All I know is it's a Christopher Sheldrake that has this beautiful amber note with mandarin orange. And there's a little bit of freshness in that orange too, shockingly. It's not just resins and spices and heaviness. There's some freshness in the opening nutmeg. Uh, and then it takes a while for the cedar to kind of join the party. The cedar joins the party after a couple hours. Um, absolutely beautiful fragrance, though. I didn't think that, um, you know, I would like something like this. But the more I wore it, I bought this as a partial. And um, this is the second time I've given it a wear. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, such a great cinnamon fantastic fragrance. Uh, that's Serge Luton's Rousse. Okay, now we're going to jump to the 1992 fragrances, but um, before we uh, do the actual full bottles, I want to show you a couple decants that I have because they're fragrances that I want to talk about, but I don't have full bottles of, so I'm glad I have a little decant to show you because some of these are important fragrances. Probably the most important from 92 I don't have a full bottle of. And that is Thierry Mugler's Angel for Women. This is one of the most influential fragrances of all time. If you can find this Thierry Mugler version, get it. If it only says Mugler and it doesn't say Thierry Mugler, try to find a Thierry Mugler version while you can. This is on my list. I love this fragrance. Um, even for me, I love the... Um, Amen. I have multiple bottles of Amen. But Angel, the original from 92, just it, it's one of those fragrances that caused such a stir, caused such a commotion. You know, people either loved it or they hated it. And um, it is considered a gourmand, but it's a gourmand that I really like and I can handle. You know, I love the way it's built. Um, I could totally wear this. The patchouli in this is outstanding. The honey, the... Um, Fruity notes, the, um, there's, there's even this uh, caramel note, which normally I would hate. I don't hate it here. Uh, the opening has insane notes. There's melon with coconut and cotton candy, and it's just an insane, you know, melange of notes that you would think would never work, and yet it does. Uh, so that is Angel by uh, Thierry Mugler for women. This is probably the most influential fragrance from 92. And I don't have it. Um, 
Another one, which is a re-release, comes from the House of Burberries, and it's called Burberries for Men. And this this was originally released in um, 1981, I believe. In 92, it was re-released. If you look on Parfumo.net, you can see that um, you can see the different bottles. The bottle with the offset atomizer to the to one side is the older bottle from the 80s. They re-released it and repackaged it in a bottle with the atomizer in the middle of the bottle with almost like a blue sapphire looking cap. Uh, that was marketed by Royal Brands. And that's the version that I actually have here. This is a Schieffer fragrance. You would think I would love this fragrance. Um, it does have this very strange mint note in the opening. Mint and lavender. And then there's a floral heart like you would expect uh, with some pepper and cedar. And then the base is stuff I love. Amber, oak moss, leather, myrrh, civet. Um, I just wanted more out of it. it. I wanted it to take that next step and it never really did. This is a sample that uh, Anuj sent me whenever I... Did a big haul from him. By the way, there's a haul from him coming within the next week or so. So I will do an unboxing when that gets here. Very excited about that. But Burberry's for men. Uh, good fragrance. Discontinued. Hard to find. Um, but I probably won't be getting a bottle unless one falls in my lap for super cheap. Okay. Now we're going to start with one. Let me get my rat. Let me get my um, microfiber cloth. So as everything stays nice and clean and fingerprint free. Um, I've thought about talking about this for a long time and I haven't really known how to talk about it. Uh, and I was, I was worried that I would kind of get laughed out of the gym, but I want to have this conversation with you guys, uh, because I, I really think that, uh, it has a place, especially nowadays. So the first fragrance we're going to talk about is this. This is called a Bussin Poron. You see that? A Bussin I'm sorry, a bus and ohm, not a bus and poor ohm, a bus and ohm. This is now a discontinued fragrance. So this is 1992 we're talking about. This is two years after the great Balenciaga poor ohm came out. And I get asked more than any other question ever that I've been asked, I think, in my comments, what fragrance out there smells like Balenciaga Pour Homme? And my answer is always nothing. And I stand by that. There is nothing that smells exactly like it. It's, it, it, it's a unique fragrance. However, this is probably the closest that you're going to get, especially if you're having a hard time finding Balenciaga Pour Homme bottles right now. The difference is that this is much fresher of a fragrance, especially in the opening. Um, the first hour, you might smell this and think I'm completely off my rocker that I say this smells like Balenciaga Pour Homme. Give it an hour or two to settle on your skin. It probably has the closest, uh, DNA of Balenciaga Pour Homme. They obviously copied it. It's two years later, right? Uh, the ingredients aren't as good. This is a cheapie. You can still find, I found this 50 ml bottle for like 20 bucks. I think it's like 25, 30 bucks now. 100 ml bottles are still 50, 60, so it's not super expensive yet. Anuj even has some, I think, uh, at Enchante Perfumes. And so this is aldehydes, artemisia, basil, green notes, mandarin orange, juniper, and lemon. And then the, the heart is cyclamen, geranium, jasmine, clove, fir, and cinnamon. That cinnamon, I think, is what's very close to the Balenciaga Pour Homme cinnamon. And then the base is oak moss, labdanum, leather, amber, musk, patchouli, and sandalwood. So you can see there's a lot of notes that actually coincide with each other. Um, this is much more green, as you can almost see from the bottle. Uh, it's much more green. And interestingly enough, you know, Balenciaga Pour Homme tried to do this thing with the um, cap where it has that marble swirl type effect that you can't see through it. They also put this little interesting piece of clay at the top. It's plastic, obviously, but you can't see through it. It's the cheapest cap you'll ever see in your life. Literally the cheapest cap you will ever see in your life. Um, however, the fragrance is not bad. And if I wanted to get close to that DNA and I did not want to pay 
big money for a bottle of Balenciaga Pour Homme. If I don't want to pay three, four hundred dollars for a bottle of Balenciaga Pour Homme, pay twenty-five bucks, get this, and see what you think. Um, again, it's not one to one. Please do not come back and attack me and say this is not Balenciaga Pour Homme. Obviously, it's not Balenciaga Pour Homme. If you want Balenciaga Pour Homme, you got to get Balenciaga Pour Homme. But this came out in 1992. And it at least reminds me of it in the later dry down. Okay, so the opening is much fresher. You might think I'm nuts in the first hour or two, but once you hit that two hour mark, you'll start to see the similarities if you're paying attention. Uh, obviously, the, the superior fragrance is Balenciaga Pour Homme, hands down. I would never argue that. Uh, but now that this is discontinued, you can still pick these up for 25 bucks. It might be worth grabbing some if you're a fan of that DNA, especially if you can't find Balenciaga Pour Homme. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to a fragrance I have a backup bottle of. And you know if I have a backup bottle of something, I love it. And the bottle is this. Maybe this will be the thumbnail, since I have two. Um, Witness by Jacques Bogard. I have one with the built-in sprayer I got from Anouj. Uh, and I have one that is a... 30 ml with the beautiful atomizer uh, and I really like this fragrance this is another fragrance that's compared to Balenciaga Pour Homme but this is nowhere near Balenciaga Pour Homme to me um, people who compare this to Balenciaga Pour Homme I don't think know what they're talking about um, again this is probably the closest uh, that you can find nothing is Balenciaga Pour Homme but that's the closest that you can find but Witness is a good fragrance in and of itself. It, it opens with some citruses like normal. You get orange and lemon and you get mugwort and then you get geranium rose and cinnamon. And again, the cinnamon here I think is why people make that comparison just because there is cinnamon uh, and patchouli. There's no comparison though to me, but this stands on its own. And I actually really like this fragrance. I really like the House of Jacques Bogart. This is beautiful in the colder weather, but it's still... Uh, because it has benzoin and, and, and styrax and patchouli and some warmer notes that really shine in the um, winter. But you could still wear this probably any season except for the high heat of summer. And uh, Witness is another discontinued fragrance. Um, so, so far we've basically gone through all discontinued fragrances except for Angel's still being produced, but it's not being produced under this Thierry Mugler tag, and that's the one you want. So all of these are discontinued so far that we're talking about. Um, but these are still readily available. They haven't been jacked up in price very much. Same with Abus and Pour Homme. Um, so if you can grab these for a good price, it might be something to consider before kind of some of that old stock dries up. Um, I really like Witness. Big fan. Uh, one of my favorite Bogarts. Furio is better, in my opinion. Furio is one of my favorite Jacques Bogarts, but uh, Witness is something else. Okay, now let's talk about a fragrance that I don't have the cap of because this is a tester that I bought from uh, Anouge, I believe, at Enchante. And uh, this is called Pierre Cardin Enigma. And the cap basically makes it almost look like a bomb. But what it's supposed to look like is a fencing mask. Uh, a fencing mask for a, for a fencer. Uh, and this is a take on a fougere. Uh, there's bergamot. There's lavender, of course. There's lavender, geranium, and uh, tonka to make the fougere DNA. But they've really beefed this up a little bit. Um... It, it feels like a fougere with some heavier oriental facets. So there's coriander and tarragon in the top. Uh, there's a fern note. Beautiful green fern note comes through. With jasmine, carnation, rose, and cinnamon. And then amber, benzoin, oak moss, labdanum, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, and cedar. So another discontinued fragrance. Um, so, so far we're on a discontinued fragrance kick. But um, I like this fragrance. But I, I wouldn't say go pay big money for this. It's a good fragrance. Uh, but my favorite Pierre Cardin is probably uh, Pierre Cardin Pour Monsieur from 1972. This is 20 years later. And um, 
it kind of got left behind. Not many people know about this. Not many people talk about Pierre Cardin, Enigma. Uh, so Enigma before Roja started using the Enigma um, moniker, obviously, handle. Um, but a good fragrance. And I, and I will be wearing this in the spring for sure. It is um, from 1992, or it wouldn't be on the list. So that is Pierre Cardin Enigma. Okay, now we're going to jump to a Jacques Polge and Francois Demachy creation. And I've talked about this fragrance a couple times on the channel. This is uh, Ungaro Pour L'Homme 2. Now this is the um, vintage Ungaro um, distributor before they were purchased by whoever purchased them, EA or whoever it was. And this is a good fragrance. It's a citrus fragrance, which I normally don't like. But what I like about this version is um, it's very musky, but it's also powdery. There's a really nice orris uh, note, but there's a lovely civet that comes out. It makes it a little bit dirty, a little bit animalic, um, and some beautiful woods that kind of shine through. And you almost get this Chanel-like uh, pop in the opening. Because it's a Jacques Polge and Francois Demachy, it almost feels like there's these aldehydes from Chanel. Uh, it's fresh because of ginger. Uh, there's old school carnation, which I love. I think we all agree that's a note that has to come back in male perfumery. And um, it is a, you know, if you like fragrances like um, Tiffany for Men, for example, that's another discontinued fragrance, unfortunately. Um, or if you like uh, Poor Monsieur, the EDP, the heavier EDP with the vanilla added to it, check out uh, Ungaro Pour L'Homme. Two. I like this better than the third version, which gets all the love. That's the one that has the vodka note in it. I'm not the biggest fan of that fragrance. Uh, this one I actually really like, though. And that civet is unique, and you won't find it very much in uh, modern perfumery. So, Ungaro Pour L'Homme 2. Okay, next is a fragrance I absolutely love. Chris from Scentland calls this Sunshine in a Bottle. So good. Um, this is a fragrance by the house of Salvador Dali, and it's called Salvador. So it has his name stake. It has his name tied to it. Anytime you name something after the founder like that, that really shows. That really shows respect in my mind. Admiration. It is to be deserve. It is to be um, you know something to be on. Look at the bottle too. It's got his artwork on the front. Absolutely stunning bottle. Um, I love this presentation. It's gorgeous. Uh, and the fragrance... The fragrance is amazing, to be honest with you. It's compared to an, another discontinued fragrance um, called Boss Spirit. So these two are supposedly two peas in a pod. I'll do a... I just got this. I haven't even had a chance to wear it yet. I decanted some. Um, but Chris from Scentland calls these fragrances sunshine in a bottle. Early 90s, bright sunshine in a bottle. And I know exactly what he means. This is a, um, it's a spicy, leathery scent. But it's, it's, it's very uplifting. It's, it's, it's very fresh. Um, there are aldehydes here and they're done very well. Uh, there's, there's something that will remind you maybe a little bit of that, uh, Ralph Lauren, uh, Safari for Men DNA, uh, which is coming next. That's also a 92 release. So you can see these are playing in the same ballpark, if you will. And, um, there is a lovely rose note that makes an appearance. This rose comes out from the depths, beautiful rose. It's, it's a little bit spicy. They use cinnamon here, uh, and they use caraway and coriander and pepper. And then the base is amber, oak moss, leather, musk, patchouli, tonka, vanilla, and cedar. Stunning fragrance. This and the original Salvador Dor Dali Porom are two of my favorites from this house and absolutely worth hunting down, especially at the current prices. If you can get a steal on these Salvador Dali fragrances like you sometimes can. Um, they are they are amazing creations. And this is one that will definitely get a lot of wear this uh, spring and summer. That's when I like to wear these type of fragrances. But even in fall, works absolutely 
beautifully. So speaking of Safari, that is the next one. Oh, I should mention Salvador by Salvador Dali is a Gerard Anthony fragrance. The great Gerard Anthony. He created this. Um, and so he also made fragrances like Iquitos and some of those big hitters. Um, Balenciaga Por Homme is a great example of a Gerard Anthony we were talking about. He made Homme de Grey. He made um, Cristobal. That's a fantastic fragrance. Uh, and it's rumored that he worked with Jean-Paul Guerlain on Samsara. Uh, so, which is one of the best sandalwood fragrances of all time. So, heavy uh, heavy talent behind Salvador. Uh, and this fragrance here plays in the same ballpark, like I said. It's it's still currently available for purchase. This is not discontinued. Everything so far we've talked about is dis has been is discontinued, except for this. This is the first one that's not discontinued. But the modern stuff that's being put out by L'Oreal is not worth your time, to be honest with you. I would just not bother, personally. Um... This one is a Cosmere version. You're going to have a hard time reading this because it's very, very small. Um, take my word for it. It's a, it's a, it's a Cosmere. Uh, and I also have a Splash backup that I, that I got from Anuj, I believe. And um, I love this fragrance. You've probably heard me say a couple times that fragrances like Heritage, Jazz, Escada Porome just make you feel, make me feel very comfortable. And, you know, I just feel very at home. I feel, you know, like it just fits me like a glove, those type of fragrances. And this does the exact same thing, this Safari. Um, Safari and Salvador, these two do the exact same thing. Um, and I just, I love the way that I love that spicy, leathery feel. You know, there's this, um, there is old school lavender with some citruses and stuff, but to me, it's that mixture of the spices with the leather. You know, the, the uh, cinnamon, the tarragon, the leather, the oak moss, the patchouli. It's such a great fragrance. So comforting. Uh, this is just a comforting scent to me. Uh, and look at the beautiful bottle, like a whiskey glass decanter. Um... It's, it's a shame that it's been reformulated to death. Again, the modern stuff is probably not worth it. Um, I wouldn't bother if I were you. I would probably just try to hunt down a vintage Cosmere bottle. It's so good, though. It's it. This is this and Polo Green. And even the Cosmere version of Polo Sport just goes to show, you know, Ralph Lauren used to put out some amazing masculine fragrances. Uh, okay, now we're going to talk about a hidden gem. No one talks about this fragrance. I think maybe I saw Fragrance Matt talk about this a couple months back. But other than that, no one talks about this. This is a fragrance called Duke by Atkinson's. It's got the little guy on the front. This plays in the same ballpark as Heritage, Jazz, um, Safari. It, it came out in 1992. Of course, it wouldn't be on this list if it didn't. Uh, but obviously there was something in the water, something going around that got this DNA going. The difference is this is much more green. This adds this beautiful spruce note. One of the most lovely spruce notes I've ever smelled in perfumery, except for um, maybe the, the closest thing to this spruce note that I've ever smelled is Les Endemodables, um Oriental Velours has a beautiful um, spruce note to go with that oriental vibe. That's an amazing fragrance, too. That's full bottle worthy, hands down. I love oriental velours. Um, the, only the spruce note is what I'm talking about here because there's a lot else going on. There's basil, uh, there's rosemary, lavender, anise, artemisia, uh, aldehydes, geranium, tobacco, patchouli, oak moss, leather, amber, musk, and cedar. Sounds like a who's who of fragrance, of fragrance notes that I love. And the fact that it's so green, that it takes that greenness from the basil, the spruce, it adds some old school rosemary. You know, rosemary, as a note, reminds me of um, Paco Rabanne Porome, which is my father's signature scent. And I, I love rosemary in a fragrance. It adds a little bit of maturity to it. And this is a very mature but amazing composition from the House of Atkinson's. 
my favorite uh, from the House of Atkinson's, actually. Um, I like this better than Rockport. And Rockport's an amazing fragrance with a beautiful vetiver. Um, but uh, Atkinson's is where it's at. Okay, now another hidden gem. Actually, I want to spray this. It's been a while since I've sprayed this. And I wouldn't even necessarily say this is a hidden gem per se, as it is a... It's hard to find in this version. It's so good. I can't wait to wear this in the summer. This is a Minotaur by Palomo Picasso. And Minotaur, um, the reason that I'm so excited about this, and again, you won't be able to see it because it's so small. The writing is so, so small. You almost need a magnifying glass. But this is a Cosmere version. You're not going to be able to see that. It's it's literally on one of those tiny lines. Um, this is a Cosmere version of Minotaur, believe it or not. Now L'Oreal is also doing this fragrance, and the new formulation is not worth it, in my opinion. If you can hunt down a Cosmere bottle like I did, get it. Especially if you're looking for a summer scent. Um, the fruits in this fragrance are so succulent and juicy. And it just mixes with the florals. There are some, it's it's almost like a, a floral musk. Um, you know, a woody floral musk that um, uses this fruit note in the opening that is just amazing. For summertime, this is fantastic stuff. It's so, you know, fresh and invigorating and uplifting and bright. Uh, there are some you know, vintage notes in here. There's galbanum. Uh, but don't think the galbanum in number 19. It just kind of blends with that fruitiness to, to, to make it, you know, part of a nice blend in the opening. Uh, you get geranium. So, so it's, it offers that kind of cleanness. But the florals are amazing in this. The jasmine, the lily of the valley, the rose. And then the base has some heavy elements. There's amber, musk, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, and cedar. I love this in summer. I can't wait to wear this. Cannot wait to wear this in summer. Speaking of summer, and speaking of uh, fantastic summer fragrances and um, perfumers getting their dues, this is now credited to Pierre Bourdon in Fragrantica. Who would have thunk it? And this is Aralfa. Now, any bottle of a four ounce or 75 ml is what you want. Uh, you don't want to get the 50 or 100 ml. That's an easy way to tell. Those are the newer bottles. They've been reformulated to death to my nose. Now, um, you may disagree, but I would only buy Creed's in the old 100 or 75 ml. This is 100 ml. And look at the dent that I put in this. This is my dent. Now, granted, in the summer, you can just spray away. I mean, you can spray this 50 times, you won't offend anyone. Um, but this is this is a this is actually an insane summer fragrance because it has some traditional notes like basil, bergamot, orange, lemon, but then there's violet, there's cumin, there's melon, and then the, the heart is cyclamen, ginger, jasmine, coriander, and pepper. So think about that. It's floral. It's peppery, but it's also mixed with this lemon and cumin with real ambergris. The old bottles apparently have real ambergris in them, and it does smell that way. You definitely get this real ambergris vibe because you get this saltiness to it with that smooth Creed sandalwood. You know, that old Creed sandalwood that you used to get in fragrances like um, Himalaya, for example, that very smooth creamy sandalwood with cedar, uh, you get that with oak moss. So it stays masculine. And there's a pine note in here that's not listed in Parfumo, but I'm pretty sure there's a pine note in here. So it's kind of green, kind of throwback. It's almost like a bridge between the 80s and 90s, the, the aquatics that are coming and the you know old school masculines from the 80s. And that's why I love this fragrance. I love this fragrance way more than Millicene Imperial. Uh, Millicene Imperial is just kind of fruity, easygoing, you know. Uh, this is this is more masculine. It's more it's more my style for the summer. 
Can't wait to wear that. Cannot wait to wear that in the summer. All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit with this one because we're going back to 1992 with the Sh Shiseido version. Let's try that three times fast. Shiseido. This is the Serge Luton's version, which came out in 2009, but I still want to talk about the fragrance. It is Feminite du Bois. Maybe one of the best um, fragrances ever created. It was made by two all-star perfumers, Christopher Sheldrake and Pierre Bourdon. Uh, and they teamed up to create this in 92. And it's funny, if you ask a lot of perfumers, what perfume would you make if you could make one fragrance? They almost always say Feminita Dubois or uh, Eau Sauvage. Those are very popular. I would say Eau de Hermes, if you, if you ask me. But um, this is uh, Woods, obviously. The femininity of Woods is what that stands for. <laughs> what that stands for. What it says in French. Um, and it is... Um, Sandalwood and cedar. Again, same combo as Aralfa. Um, but it, they, it, this one adds this interesting spiciness from clove, cardamom, and cinnamon. So you got the woods, you get the clove, cardamom, cinnamon, and then you get this honey with fruits. And So you get honey and beeswax with fruits, plum and peach, and then some musk and florals. So the only problem I have with this fragrance is it feels a little bit light on me when I wear it. Um, so I'll probably wear this more in the summer or spring, even though, you know, it feels like it should be heavier. The notes should be heavier, that it should be more of a winter fragrance. It's not. This fragrance, this version from 2009, the Serge Luton's version, is a little toned down. Rich Mitch has the original Femini to Dubois from Shiseido, and he says that it's much more amped up. It's thicker, it's more resinous, it's heavier. And, um, you know, see how the juice is almost that see-through, thin look? It doesn't look very resinous, not like Cher Guy or Ombre Sultan. And you get that in this fragrance. It feels lighter, it feels a little bit more watered down. But the original from 92, almost impossible to find. Um, but, worth talking about, worth mentioning, fantastic fragrance. Very lucky to even have this bottle. Um, okay, now we're going to go to what I would consider another summer fragrance. And that is Malto Smalto by Francesco Smalto. Now, Smalto Pour Homme is the best fragrance this house ever put out, hands down. This is a splash that I got from uh, somewhere. Le Parfumé, Anouge, I can't remember. Um, but, uh, this is a, this is a fresher take on things to me because it keeps that old school lavender and rosemary, but it starts to, you start to see that nineties influence here. So there are some woods, again, sandalwood and cedar combo, um, just like the last two fragrances. There's also a floral element to this. There's lily of the valley, jasmine, geranium, and then there's clary sage. And uh, the top is uh, lemon, lavender, coriander, and rosemary. So, you know, you could say Smalto Pour Homme is maybe for the fall and winter. And you could say this is for the spring and summer. If you are a big fan of the house of uh, Francesco Smalto, which I am. Uh, but if I, I only have this and um, Smalto Pour Homme. If I could only back one up, though, it would be Smalto Pour Homme. Um, I am not lukewarm on this, but it's not, it's not my favorite wear. Uh, but it's a good fragrance and of course it's discontinued. So you know me, it's discontinued. Gotta get it. Gotta have it. Um, gotta have it for the uh, scent museum I'm collecting. Okay. Now we're going to go to a vintage fragrance from the house of Cartier. And this is Pasha. De Cartier. Apparently someone said this is supposed to be like a pen. Did you know that? It's supposed to be like a pen? Um, okay. So Pasha de Cartier is an out and out fougere. Through and through. It's a fougere. Uh, it's a classic fougere. Um, this is created by Jacques Cavalier. And what he's done is he's added very fresh notes at the top, like, um, 
mint, thyme, orange, lavender. And then he's offset that with some Brazilian rosewood, um, coriander, alisum. I'm not sure what alisum is. Uh, patchouli, labdanum, oak moss, and uh, sandalwood. Um, if you are a fan of fougeres in general, <laughs> excuse me, you have to try Pasha de Cartier, the original EDT. Not the new EDP, not the new Parfum, I should say. The new Parfum is um, more modern. There's more synthetics, more amber woods, more, you know, I think there's like a liquor note in that one. That's a great modern designer, if that's kind of your thing. If you're into the old school sense, though, check out the original EDT, uh, especially if you're a fougere lover. If you're a fougere lover, this is um, this is all-time Hall of Fame fougere material. Now, the last two are Hall of Fame fragrances in my heart. Um, this one completely blew me away. Actually, Rich Mitch found this, and... Um, I, as soon as I smelled it, I went and bought a backup bottle. Instantly, instantly got a backup. And it's called Secret de Parfum, Opium. Opium Secret de Parfum. So apparently I thought, and, and this is the Parfums Corp version, but I thought Secret de Parfum was a flanker. Um of opium and it was a completely different fragrance. It's not. Secret de Parfum is YSL's way of saying eau de parfum, but the Secret de Parfum was discontinued in this in this um, version and then reissued as what, what they called the eau de parfum. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is such a great, this is a fantastic fragrance. This is one of the most amazing fragrances I discovered last year. And I discovered some amazing fragrances last year. But Secret de Parfum, it is in a world of its own. It literally is in a world of its own. It's so good. It is so good. It is um, one of the best myrrh fragrances I've ever smelled, ever. Um, big myrrh in this. Huge myrrh. Rich Mitch said he's never smelt such myrrh, and I agree. It is a, it is an outstanding myrrh. The citruses at the top are just there for show. I mean, literally, they're there for show. You don't get much orange, lemon, bergamot. It just gets swallowed up by the clove, the rose. God, the rose is so beautiful in this. Jasmine, myrrh, vanilla, patchouli, amber, and benzoin. It is stunning. And, and, you know, when you talk about these old YSL fragrances, uh, this is a Parfums Corp, like I said, version. You go buy your Parfums Corp Coros, which I have and love. Uh, I have a Charles of the Ritz Coros coming, coming in this haul from Manouge. It's just a shame what has happened to the house of um, YSL. There's a lot of fragrances that L'Oreal is in charge of now. YSL. Um, Ralph Lauren, um, Thierry Mugler, um, so as you can see, some, oh yeah, Minotaur, some of these fragrances have not been taken care of by some of these big brands, and that's the reason I love vintage fragrances, is the ingredients are so much better. I mean, this is miles ahead of anything modern. In fact, there's an old joke in the industry, running joke, that L'Oreal um, destroyed opium so bad. They, they literally ruined the formula of opium so bad that they had to get on the phone with John Louis Suizak, the uh, perfumer, and beg him to come out of retirement to fix their mistakes. How's that? How's that for just ultimate capitulation? Please help us. We messed up. Um, you know, it's just, they're, they're all about saving money. They're all about reformulating to save money. They're all about reformulating to put more money in the pocket. They're not about reformulating to make things better. And that's why these vintage fragrances mean so much to me. I would never sell this, ever, ever. Uh, this, these are, these are off limits to be sold, um, just because of 
you know what what they what they mean uh you'll you'll never be able to find it you could go buy a thousand dollar rosia you'll never be able to find something of that quality this is this is this is um i mean this is like a mountaintop experience for a fraghead seriously it's like a mountaintop experience uh okay now the final one on the list and maybe the most special of any fragrance uh, on this list to me. Maybe my favorite masculine, one of my favorite masculines of all time. Uh, and this fragrance means so much to me for a couple reasons. Number one, um, when I smelled this years ago, I realized uh, that this fragrance is multifaceted in the, in the way that it acts. It respects the past, and it gives past fragrances from this house a nod and, you know, a thank you and a salute. But it also harkens towards the future, you know. And the bottle itself is like a pendulum in time, you know. It's like it's like a pendulum swinging uh, that never ends. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's Heritage. EDT with the gold cap. You have to get the gold cap. Um... Just getting the five batch code is not enough. There's a silver cap that went through a small reformulation. It's still good, um, especially if you can find it in this older bo style bottle that looks like a pendulum swinging. Um, I have a splash, 200 ml splash backup of this. Oh, God. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's my favorite Jean-Paul Guerlain masculine of all time. Let's put it that way. Uh, and this is one of the best patchouli fragrances of all time. Uh, the patchouli in this is outstanding. And this, this is a fragrance that um, is extremely complex. If you're a fan of complex perfumery, you don't have to go spend $1,000 on a Roja fragrance. Uh, you can just go buy Heritage, the EDT. Now, you need the vintage, so you got to pay a little bit more. But this is everything. It's woody. It's powdery, it's aromatic, it's manly, it's earthy, there's lavender, there's tobacco, there's this hay-type feel of forest floor, there's coriander, there's orris, which makes it powdery, there's beautiful oak moss in the bay, stunning oak moss. Um, there's this violet leaf that, or violet um, flower accord that comes through sometimes in the opening. That reminds you of the way that Roja uses violet. You know, I, I've, I've said before, Roja has this patented floral DNA that has this violet rose de mai, jasmine from grass thing that he claims. Um, you smell that in this. And, you know, he worked for Guerlain. And um, it definitely makes you wonder, doesn't it? Uh, the, the, the fragrance in this is absolutely outstanding. Um, and... The patchouli will uh, harken towards the future with Lion de Guerlain, but when you first spray this, you'll smell all of the other great Guerlains from the past. You'll smell Chalamar. You'll smell Jiki. You'll smell uh, Habi Rouge. You'll smell the powderiness from Habi, from Habi Rouge here. Um, and it's just... There's also this um, beautiful rose that peeks through. But it stays so masculine. You know, a lot of these you could say, okay, a woman could wear it and it's unisex, whatever it may be. This, for me, is masculine through and through. These type of scents, the, these that I'm throwing into the category, the bucket, if if I will. The way I think about scents like this and YSL Jazz and Escada Pour Homme, they're masculine through and through to me. Uh, a lot of this, I say I'd love to smell it on a woman, but for me, Heritage is just, um, you know, it's it's the pinnacle of masculine perfumery. And Guerlain, you know, it's I wish they would start making stuff like this again. Even if they have to charge more, I don't care. Just give us the chance to buy something like this again, Guerlain. Um, you know, give us the chance to to enjoy a fragrance like this. I mean, this thing has like 24 notes in it. It is, oh, there's also a carnation note. I should mention it. I love carnation. Just, 
it's such a great fragrance. If you've never smelled the vintage EDT of Heritage, you are missing out. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. So that's 1992. Uh, I mean, what a year, apparently. So um, I think we probably will start going downhill after this, but let me know if you have feedback on these. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know uh, if there's any from 1992 I miss. I know there is some, but um, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the feedback. You know, a like and a subscription definitely help, helps the channel. But uh, if you don't feel like giving one, that's fine too. And, um, you know, I appreciate you spending time with me. And I, and I love seeing your faces in the comments below. So let me know what you think. And I'll see you again soon with another video. Cheers. Bye-bye.